so much. This is such an honor to be able to represent this fine organization tonight by being the recipient of this award. I'm going to set it down right here. I want to thank my wife, my family, <laughs> but mostly I want to thank you, the members of the International Society of Against Stupid People. You have a silly name, but you have a serious purpose. You are trying to raise our expectations of what we as a species can do on this planet. You are asking us all to reevaluate our priorities. And more than anything, you're asking us each to look for ways to become better people. I would like to dedicate this award tonight to somebody who was in the news a few weeks ago. He was a teenager, he was completely innocent, and he was shot and killed. Let me tell you a little bit about him. He was born May 27, 1998, down the very tip of Texas, in a town called Brownsville, in a facility just two miles from the Mexican border. His mother <coughs> was an African immigrant who was incarcerated and had a life sentence. So right away, he was put into foster care. His foster father gave him a name that he thought would honor his family's heritage. It was a Swahili name. And he heard it from a song lyric by Rita Marley. They loved him. They said anybody who met him saw that he had great intelligence, curiosity, and they always made him smile. He lived down in Texas till he was 15 years old, till finally a family adopted him. And he moved to Cincinnati, Ohio. One day after his 17th birthday, this innocent teenager was shot down in the prime of his life. Mm -hmm. Killed like an animal. And the truth is, he was an animal. To be specific, he was a western mountain gorilla at the Cincinnati Zoo named Harambe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get your attention with that <laughs> for a very important reason. There is a 450-pound elephant in this room, and it's us, human beings. When I was a little boy, I loved the movie Dr. Doolittle. And Dr. Doolittle at one point sang the song called Like Animals, and it begins by him saying, I do not understand the human race. It has so little love for creatures with a different face. Treating animals like people is no madness or disgrace. I do not understand the human race. And then he goes on and asks this question. Why do we treat animals like animals? I don't have a special love for mountain gorillas. I came this close once in Africa to see the mountain gorilla. I was in a museum. And I had backed up and almost bumped into this taxidermy version of a mountain gorilla. But even in that state, he was very intimidated, especially my height there. But as I looked around that room, I realized I was surrounded by dead animals. Animals that are, many of them, going extinct. In fact, the mountain gorilla, there's only 175,000 of them left in the world. Now, that sounds like a lot, probably. Fort Lauderdale has about 175,000 people in it. So that, that is a lot of gorillas. But just to put this in perspective, there are, as many of you know, in the International Society Against Stupid People, there are over 7.4 billion human beings on this planet. And every day that population number grows, not by birth, but counting, counting for deaths too, by 200,000 people every single day. 
So humans are growing, but animals populations are shrinking. And it's not just the gorillas. The Samaritan elephant, there's around 2,400 of them left. The vaquita, which is sort of a cousin of the dolphin, there's only about 100 of them left. The Java rhino, 35 are left. The Amur leopard, in the wild there are only about 30 of these creatures left. Extinction is happening. Now some of you are going to say, Hey, but extinction is natural, isn't it? I mean, this planet has had life on it for like 3.8 billion years. And extinction has always been a natural part. <clears throat> You're absolutely right. And it's interesting. If, if all of you in this room, including myself, represented all the creatures that ever lived on this planet, about 5 billion species, guess how many have been extinct? Or how about flip that? Guess how many are left? Approximately this much. Out of all those, 99.9% .9 are now extinct. Now, yes, a lot of that is natural, but the extinction rate before humans was approximately 0.01 per million animals every year. Ago. Since humans sort of joined the party here on the planet, that shot up to 100 times, and that rate is growing tremendously, like a snowball rolling down the hill and getting bigger and bigger. And it's predicted that in just 80 years, there will be a thousand times. Since humans have been on this planet, two-thirds of all animals have gone extinct. Two-thirds. And it's predicted by 2010 that that number will be cut in half as well. We're stupid human beings sometimes. We have a responsibility to take care of ourselves because this domino effect of all these creatures will affect us tremendously one day if we don't take action. And I'm embarrassed to tell you tonight, I thought the solution might be we just should all get rid of the humans. That might be the best <laughs> thing to happen on this planet. But that does not fit with what this society believes in. One of the past recipients, the Dalai Lama, said this, the only clear thing is that we humans are not the only species with the power to destroy the earth as we know it. The birds have no such power, nor do the insects, nor do the mammals. Yet, if we have the capacity to destroy the earth, so too do we have the capacity to protect it. So I'll leave you with the meaning of harambe. It's a Swahili word for it. let's pull together. Let's pull together. And like Dr. Doolittle, care about the end.